Today we have a story of a crazy entitled parent who says some horrible things to their own kid. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, religious mother wants me to leave the prayer alarm clock on while she goes on vacation for two months. I, 24 year old male, live at home with my mom who's leaving for two months to see family out of the country. She's leaving tomorrow and she just asked me to please keep the alarm clock on. It's basically a clock that goes off every day for prayer time. She's Muslim, so there's five times that it goes off, and it doesn't just make an alarm sound, it makes a two-minute prayer time song, and it's loud. She knows I'm not Muslim, of course she's against that, but she's expecting me to leave it on while she's gone and I'm home alone. Her reasoning is that it invites angels into the house. I didn't even answer her when she talked to me, I just went to my room. Obviously she knows I'm keeping it off, but it's mildly infuriating that she's entitled enough to ask that. I really sympathize with OP here because I hate confrontation. So although I know the answer really here is to be able to enforce your boundaries and say I'm not going to leave that on, I wouldn't want to have to look my mom in the face and say that to her and begin this whole argument. Would it be better in this situation to just do a white lie so that everybody's kind of happy? Tell her, oh it was great, I left it on the whole time, blah blah blah, and you actually had it unplugged? Me Foley wrote, she needs the angels, put the clock in her bed under the blankets and smothered in pillows, under the mattress if needed, can honestly and sincerely state that you followed her request. OP responded saying, Some people are calling me the entitled one so I might honestly do this. Now no one's entitled. Ha! Huh, take that, demons. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy crazy stories of entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, Mom, female 58, wants to go on every trip with me, female 28. This is more of a rant than anything, but also asking advice on how to develop a backbone and say no to someone who's used to getting their way. Every time I mention wanting to go visit XYZ country or city, my mom invites herself to the trip and suddenly it becomes, we have to go. She has a lot of disposable income and treats me slash pays for expenses when we go. She says I'm her best friend and that she truly doesn't like traveling with other people. She also asks me all the time if I can go with her on this trip or that trip. She's a semi-retired businesswoman who can work her own hours and has the freedom. I work a 9 to 5 for someone else. My boyfriend and I got into a fight because I used a big chunk of my PTO for a trip with her and says I don't travel with him. I want to do more solo traveling and also plan more trips with just my boyfriend, but my mom is very needy and exhausting and I end up agreeing to trips she asks me to go on. I really do like spending time with her, but sometimes it feels like an obligation. I sit here and wonder if I'm ungrateful. None of my other friends go on nearly this many trips as I do with my family and I feel jealous that they manage to plan trips with friends and their parents are happy for them. Whereas if I try to plan an international trip, my mom would get jealous. She would also get so offended and take it personally, mind you I rarely travel alone, ever. Even with my first international trip last year with my boyfriend, she turned her nose on the country we picked and wasn't excited for me and that she would never visit that country because there's nothing to see there. Again, I sympathize, I don't want to have to have confrontation, but it's either you roll over and let her control everything and do everything she wants to do for the rest of your life, or you start telling her that you want to be able to do trips by yourself, or just with your boyfriend. And not that you just want to, but that you are going to, and that you hope that she can learn to not be jealous or have resentment because you don't want every experience to be with her. A plower wrote, you're going to have to put down boundaries with her sooner or later. I've been in your situation. My mom has no friends, family, or partner, so I had to fulfill all of those roles up until recently. And much like yours, she felt jealous whenever I would go on trips with my partner without her. Unlike yours, mine also expected me to pay for and plan everything, while she just showed up and complained the entire trip. Spoiler alert, she has no friends or partner and her family is estranged because she's so hard to deal with. Look up the term family enmeshment. If you continue to yield, she will continue to be rewarded for her lack of boundaries and your resentment will continue brewing. It'll only get worse as she gets older, doesn't seem like a sustainable or healthy relationship, and it sounds like it's already impacting your happiness and your relationship. OP responded saying, My high school therapist introduced me to family enmeshment. My attempts to create boundaries has been a multi-year process accelerated by finding a partner I love and realizing I can't be a partner for both my mother and someone else. My mom has friends, but she prefers my company. She also hates my dad and is miserable. She never found herself a new partner, so she commits emotional incest and for a long time I played that role. 
This next story is getting away from my family before my brother's wedding. (sighs) Okay. So my brother, 29, is getting married in October. He cut me off in January because I'm trans and was apparently ruining his life. I'm 22 and was legally kidnapped by my father after my parents' divorce at the age of 11 from the US to the UK, where he remarried a rich woman in the international cult we were in from the time of my parents' marriage. Oof, a lot of context here. Anyway, tried to end things when I found out that my mom was going to the bridal shower of my brother and his fiance, and no one was going to try and talk to my brother about letting me come or giving me support on the day because it was going to be extremely hard for me because it felt like my whole family was abandoning me. I hope that makes sense. Tried to end things, was in the hospital, and oh, while I was there, my dad was in the US. My mom didn't tell me and came to our house, which he owns through my rich stepmom, unannounced. He has stalked me in the past when I tried to leave the cult at 19, so needless to say, he's a creep and likes to terrorize me. He also SA'd me and he's going to my brother's wedding and my mom is going and everyone is so fine with him and I'm shunned for being trans. So I'm also disabled and trying to create a plan to move in with a friend where I'll work with her on a small farm to pay rent and try to recover from my life. Feeling like my mom is upset because I'm moving out? Too bad, so sad, but it's freaking affecting me and I hate it. Like, she put a roof over my head, so I should be grateful, you know? I'm trying to be as independent as possible with food stamps and Medicaid, but she still has to help me financially every once in a while. But I'm done. I need to get away and I'm tired of feeling guilty for wanting that. She thinks she's been a perfect mother, even though she let my dad take me to another country away from everyone I knew and also knew he was grooming me and was a predator. Okay, I'm done. Well, not really, but that's the gist of my situation and my parents thinking they're so not the reason I'm freaking horribly depressed and stressed. Needless to say, obviously the biggest wrench in the entire situation is the disability. It really kind of hampers OP's ability to move out and kind of live on their own and support themselves. It's really nice to hear that OP's trying to form a plan with their friend while they work with her on a small farm and whatnot. And honestly, I really hope that works out for them because obviously OP deserves to have space away from all of these equally horrible people and be safer in the sense that you don't have to be exposed to these people who just bring you down. I don't need a new name wrote, I'm sorry you have to go through such horrible things, and the people that were supposed to protect you were the ones who even abused you. I hope things turn out well for you when you move in with your friend. I wish you luck in life. OP responded saying thank you, I'm just glad I finally have some light at the end of the tunnel with this friend. She really is my rock. Our next story is, how do you deal with parents dumping their kids on you during your vacation? We're flying out to see darling husband's sibling and her family for his niece's first birthday. We're excited because this is our first time in the South. Last minute, she said she needed us to watch the kids because they had something to do. How convenient, right? If we weren't flying in, what would she do? And who would watch the kids? I had a feeling this would happen, so I made plans and left some spaces where we could spend time with family. She's telling us now she just needs us to watch the kids for three hours. I know it's not that long and we could do it, but I'm afraid of confirming right away because it gives them the idea that we'll do it again. I don't know. Any other recommendations or advice? Just because we don't have kids yet doesn't mean it makes it okay to dump the kids on us. We both work full time with our careers and it would be nice to actually have some R&R and explore the city and not watch kids. Also, they're very codependent on our attention, aka supply, but when we do spend time with them, it's mainly them complaining, talking crap, being intrusive about my health issues and fertility and asking about family gossip. Exhausting. We're only flying in for that event. There shouldn't be any other obligation, right? I can hear her now. We didn't even spend time with them. They just stayed here, came for the party, and left. I think these are the kinds of people you just kind of slowly pull away from. Realistically, you just turn down more events getting to see them if they're going to always dump the kids on you. Either that or just tell them straight up, listen, I don't want to be babysitting your kids every time I see you. I guess if that makes me the villain and you hate me, so be it. Apprehensive by 4920 wrote, Sounds to me like you drink a lot at the airport bar and on the plane and are in no position to be responsible for kids. Cloakat added, LOL, there was a post a while back about the youngest sibling always getting stuck watching his brother and sister's kids. All day long throughout the entire vacation, every single time the family went someplace. 
He had enough and immediately just started drinking during the next trip they all took and his siblings flipped out, saying that this was their vacation and how could he not watch the kids blah 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 and he was just like, nah, this is my vacation, I'm going to drink. 10 out of 10. Our next story is, mom saying I cannot yell at her. I promise this isn't what it sounds like. I just wanted to start off by saying I think I'm a pretty good child and my mom always tells me too. I'm 18 and I help her by doing all the chores in the house. I understand she's a single mother carrying this family and working too. I go drive to get her groceries and food. I'm going to a college soon and the tuition is completely paid and she doesn't have to pay a cent out of her pocket. I really hope I've made her proud. I'm always trying to be obedient and when she gets mad, I try to swallow it down and get over it. She asks me a lot of things that I sometimes don't agree with or don't want to do, like forcing me into certain clothes and I do my very, very best to comply with it even if I don't want it. I do love her very much and I love this family of three very, very much. Recently, she's asked me to give her my university portal account login and password to have full access to seeing my finances and refunds that get dispersed into my student account. She's also in a fit since I put the direct deposit from the school under my checking account instead of hers. I just thought I could be able to send the scholarship refund money to her. I hesitated to give this information to her because I wanted a little bit of privacy with my account. I wanted a little bit of independence with my future life and maybe managing my own finances in my own student account. I love my mom and I do admit, I am still a very dependent child, but maybe having control over this one account would be nice. I wrote down my username and password, but I forgot an extra character that I use that covered all the site password requirements, like when they want a symbol or something. Anyways, long story short, she tried logging in and it didn't work. So I tried several other logins until it finally worked and now she's blaming me saying that I purposely wrote down the wrong password because I didn't want her to see my finances. I wanted to keep the refund money to myself or something. Not that I really had much left after paying for my housing rent and stuff and trying to manipulate her. I never yell at her. I am always obedient and highly respectful even when I'm mad. But every time she accuses me of lying it kind of sets off a trigger inside me. I did yell at her today, and I cried and I got very emotional because this is just such a weird and absurd thing to accuse me of that I don't want her to see my scholarship money or something, even though we went over the exact amount months ago, or that I want to hide things from her. Now she's telling me that I'm not allowed to yell at her, that I must respect her, and I decided to talk back, saying that if she didn't want that, then she should not unreasonably accuse me of those things, and accept that I make mistakes. Now she's saying that she can accuse me all she wants and I better not yell at her, or in the future I would be yelling at her when she gets old. She's also afraid that I will be overly independent like my friends, and she's afraid they've influenced me. She's afraid I will not be one with my family. These are all her words. I always try to push down my emotions and show her I am an obedient and respectful kid, but now I feel she's pushed a lot of my own boundaries, but puts it on me by saying I pushed hers by yelling at her. I feel like she feels she can push all the boundaries she wants on me, but I cannot do the same back when I feel like she is overstepping. So I guess, am I wrong for yelling and getting mad? I'll do my best to not yell ever again, but I just feel like the dam kind of opened here and I hate being accused of dishonesty. Thank you guys for any help or any constructive criticisms on my behavior. So, is OP really having to reach out to strangers on the internet to ask them, can I, an 18 year old, be in the right if I want some independence? Am I, an 18 year old, allowed to have an opinion and be upset? I mean, I feel for OP because it's just coming off so sheltered, so protected. Her coming up with this nonsense that OP's getting these ideas of being too independent planted in their mind from their friends is crazy. It sounds to me like OP's barely allowed to go take a shower by themselves. You want to talk about being too independent? Wife of Bath 1984 wrote, I'm glad you love your mom, but she sounds incredibly controlling. It's a good thing you had that money sent to your account because it sounds like she wanted to spend it herself. That money is for school, not for your mom. The fact that she said your friends are overly independent is absurd. You are a young adult and you should be gaining independence as you grow. You are living in this situation so you don't see it, but to me, your mom sounds like a helicopter parent who has no intention of letting you gain your independence. This will likely get worse as you grow older. 
about the yelling, no one should be yelling at all, her included, but you absolutely are allowed to defend yourself and place your own boundaries. You are your own person, not an extension of your mother like she seems to think. Our next story is moving away. Hey everyone, I'm sure this is the billionth post about moving out and dealing with parents who don't agree with it. A little background about me, I'm 25 year old male, son of immigrant parents both in their 60s. I have three siblings, two of them which are older and one younger. A little bit of background, both my mom and dad are immigrants. My dad immigrated in the late 70s and my mom came to the US later on around when I was 4 years old. They are simple people trying to make it in such a terrible place to live and I respect my parents and grateful for the sacrifices they made in raising my siblings and I. They both work and are currently trying to pay off some outstanding debts they have from when my dad was sick. Recently, I broke the news that I'm moving and living in my own, roughly 30 minutes away from where I was raised for a majority of my life. What is supposed to be a happy moment in my life in starting my adult life has been received with criticism, gaslighting, breakdowns, arguments, guilt tripping and plain out saying very harsh and mean things. My mom is the main driver in this situation. She breaks down at the fact that I'm moving out and she said things like, You've shown your true colors and you've stepped on my neck and I'll never forget it. You are who I rely the most, why are you leaving? Get that out of your head, you must have money to throw away if you're leaving, might as well use it to help us. Do you see what damage you're doing to your dad and I? He already has so much on his plate. Why are you in such a rush to leave us? Why is she acting like this? Why not support her son? Mind you, this is not the first time she's acted like this. She acted around the same with my older siblings, but this time it seems like I've betrayed her and that what I'm doing is wrong. In her eyes, anything I do for myself is selfish, and I can't do anything for myself. What do I do and how do I handle her acting like this? Anyone with a similar experience as me? Or am I a jerk for doing this? I say this is just more confirmation that OP needs to move out of there and honestly not look back. I would say move out and tell her if you're going to keep acting like this and you just keep giving me grief and you just keep attacking me for wanting to live on my own and be independent, that you're just going to stop replying and ignore her until she calms down and you can have some semblance of an actual relationship. Just Larinky wrote, I'm so sorry. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. When my 19 year old moved out, I asked him if it was because I did something wrong. He said, no, it's because you did everything right. He taught me what I needed to know and I'm ready to be an independent adult. I will never forget that conversation. Our job as parents is to raise good adults. It sounds like your parents mostly did that. They should be very proud instead of trying to guilt you. Our next story is, my father literally told me to end myself and saw nothing wrong with it. That happened to me two weeks ago. I was at my biological father's apartment and we were drinking tea together. Basically, by that time I had just passed my exams and I was pretty beaten up by them. I had sleep problems, anxiety, panic attacks, and my bipolar simply went wild like never before. I was recovering and trying to do small steps to get out of this terrible mental state. So when the topic of exams naturally came, I told him about all that but without much detail. When he asked why I can just forget and move on, I try to explain that it's complicated and not how PTSD, I do have exam related traumatic experiences from my previous uni that I left, and mentality works. He still did not get it, telling me I'm just overreacting and making excuses to be lazy. I again try to explain in details what is really happening with me, giving him examples from my past that also included ending things ideations. His response was, well go and end things then if you cannot live with your mental problems in the society. And then he just went talking about how in his time there were no mental issues and everyone was happy and modern kids are so weak. Back at that moment, I just tried to brush it off and switch topics, and an hour later left on relatively good terms. However, when I came back home, I realized how freaked up the entire situation was, and it severely affected me for the next three days. I was legitimately thinking about it and had to put a lot of mental efforts to resist and find reasons not to. A few days later, I managed to get over this situation and just decided not to talk to my biological father anymore unless he apologizes. I came around to the same apartment to meet with my stepmother to show her some cool new English books I ordered, which she can scan the parts of to use for her classes. She's an English teacher and I live in a non-English speaking country. I thought my biological father wasn't home, so I felt comfortable coming around, but unfortunately he was. 
I decided not to play a silence or ignore game and directly explain the situation. He was legitimately surprised to hear me being upset about it and replied that he was just speaking his mind and I'm too soft and easily offended. That's very funny to hear from a person who can start a rant calling you disrespectful and rude if you say anything that even slightly touches their ego. That made me really angry, but I tried to keep my cool down and again explain that you do not say such things to a person with such a history. He was really surprised and asked, what history? That was the last drop for me because he was the freaking one who took me to a mental hospital after my attempt three years ago. And he does know about my recent one last August because it involved cops and a next door neighbor who notified him. I was ticked to the bone and openly told him that I'm tired of trying to pretend he's an okay father. That I don't want to hear his stupid comments about my mental health anymore. That I know he does not give a crap about me and that he's no better than my biological mother. She is an abusive, religiously obsessed expletive and I did almost cut all contact with her. My stepmother heard all that too, and though she didn't directly oppose my biological father, her husband, not to escalate the situation, she did show me support and said that she honestly agreed with some stuff I was saying. My father was totally dumbfounded and again said that he just spoke his mind openly and he saw nothing to apologize for. I responded that in that case, I saw no way to continue talking to him anymore, started ignoring him, and left 15 minutes later after I finished my business with my stepmother. I did not communicate with my biological father ever since, and I'm thinking of cutting all contacts with him too. I know I can try having a civil talk and put my effort to make him apologize, but what's the point if he clearly doesn't and does not want to understand me? I honestly think if I ask him what is my favorite color, what are my interests, who's my favorite singer, he will not be able to answer these because he's almost never been interested in my life beyond education, job, and poking my mental health. It's hard for me to no contact him because I'll basically have to admit to myself that I never had loving and caring parents to begin with and that is a very devastating thing to do, even though objectively I already know it is true. Thank you for listening to my story, and I hope you do have loving and caring parents, unlike me. Honestly, I think the sooner OP accepts and embraces honestly the fact that he's just not that good of a guy, it'll be for the better. That way you can't be hurt by somebody like that. The sooner you honestly just don't take stock in his opinions because they're not good ones, the better. I don't think you have to try to set this idyllic goal of having these perfect parents who are hyper supportive. If that were the case, if that were the goal, there wouldn't be a billion posts on r slash entitled parents. Synthetic God 8 wrote, you're not too sensitive for being disturbed when someone tells you to go hurt yourself. That's a completely normal reaction. I wish I could ask him why he's too easily offensive. Like, he's not speaking his mind. He had a choice to be kind and see your side. Instead, he's deliberately saying the thing his sick mind has calculated would hurt you the most. He's self-satisfied that he gets to put you in your place as he sees it, and you will never get him to see how you see him. Seriously, stop trying to win his love or affection and let him die alone. He has none to offer. His heart is cold and dead and he cares only about the appearance of strength and not actual resilience. To people like that, strength is burying your feelings until you hit your spouse or tell your son to hurt himself to avoid confronting reality, but it's just denial. Our next story is left restaurant today. I had to ask the restaurant my husband and I went to tonight to make our orders to go thanks to an entitled parent. We went to one of our local restaurants. There was a family of six, four kids under five. They were being typical kids laughing or giggling, which is fine. One started screaming a lot, and there was zero correction or response from either parent. One of the kids then proceeded to start hitting her plate repeatedly, nonstop, with a spoon. Still, zero response from the parents. As my husband is currently having some sensory issues, I went up to their counter and asked for everything to be to go. She asked if something was wrong and I said yes, unfortunately they are just too much for us. The mother proceeds to tell me she's only three and it was a bit of an altercation. Apparently it's a restaurant, they're allowed to be as loud as they want to be. I should note this is not a McDonald's where this would be appropriate. Kids are hard. But it's really awful when you just want to have a nice meal and can't because people think their kids can do anything, anywhere, with a zero consideration for others. Ma'am, this is an Outback Steakhouse. If my kids want to play drum set with their plate and spoon, they're allowed to. 
Pleasantly Dumb wrote, We had a child recently where I worked that was out of control. She was running amok, trying to go in the kitchen and into the server station to take things. Went to the other server station and tried to open drawers, take silverware and glassware, all while her parents just ate their meals and sipped their wine. When confronted by my manager, the mom said, She's just being a kid. She's curious. I should mention I work in a very high-end restaurant, not a kid-friendly place, no kids menu, no crayons or anything to keep kids entertained. It's not our job to babysit your hex pawn, yet it amazes me how often parents expect their server to entertain their kid. OP responded saying, This is unreal to me. Restaurants and kitchens can be very dangerous. Knives, glass, and hot food? Same mom would blame and sue the restaurant if her kid got hurt. Our next story is, I need support because I'm about to give in. My parents just came back from Hajj, it's mandatory for Muslims, which I'm very happy for, and they asked me not to ruin it for them by going back home now that they've come back. Sleeping a few days, which are not only a few days, and receiving the people who will be visiting them, of course I want to go, but at the same time I don't because in the bottom, I know it'll be the same situation as any other time. I won't be able to leave when I want to, and when I do decide to leave, they'll make me feel bad. Why can't they just admit that, yes, I am living alone, I am tired of the lies. My intrusive thoughts are winning, and I'm starting to feel like I'm a piece of crap. I'm a bad daughter and sister for not visiting my siblings while my parents were away, for not going to Eid, that I will fail if I don't go with them in such an important moment of their lives, because according to my parents, I don't believe what's true and what's a lie anymore, they only want me to spend time with the family, and then we can talk about what is what I really want. I know what I want and I have left it clear, but that doesn't work, because me living alone while financially supporting myself is not an option that works for us all as a family. One of the choices they've given me is going back to live in their apartment, if what I want is to live in the city, and another one is them choosing an apartment and I can pay them the rent instead. I would just say, if you can choose not to go back, do not go back because that sounds horrendously controlling. I mean, if you want to do what's best in their interest and their interest alone for the sake of the family, then by all means, go back and listen to them. But if you want to live your life, no way. Squirrelfoot wrote, they're going to be all geared up to be extra controlling after Hajj. Don't go back. I hope your parents aren't as bad as my colleagues. She caved to pressure from the family and went back to her home country for a wedding, and her parents tried to force her into an arranged marriage, with threats of ending things from her mother when she wouldn't do it. Her brother stole her passport back from her parents, or she'd never have been able to escape. OP responded saying, I'm willing to go and visit for the day, but not stay and sleep. I'm mentally exhausted and just don't think I can take another round of talking and conversation. Just so that I can explain for the thousandth time that I'm staying where I am and I'm not choosing any of their options, because if I want to go on a short trip on the weekend or go eat at 3am at McDonald's, I'm going to do it. Plus, I'm tired of the threats, over and over and over again. But I feel guilty for not going. I feel like crap and like I'm a completely selfish human being for thinking about me and wanting certain things for my life. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.